Hi everyone, this is our channel Around My Story. Please like, share and subscribe. My name is Keanu and I'm 13 years old. I am a psychopath. I freely admit it in front of all of you. I attribute my sickness solely to my father because any story about a cruel father pales in comparison to my father. He would abuse me physically, mentally, verbally, and emotionally in every given moment. He left no stone unturned in this regard. He would beat me into unconsciousness. He accused me of being the cause of my mother's death, who died during my childbirth. Whenever dad had any problem at home, he would accuse me of being the cause of it. One time he even beat me at school when my teacher called him to school because I had beat up my classmate who had beaten me up first. I tried to explain to him, but he wouldn't listen and he just beat me even more. One day, it was fun day at school and everyone was supposed to invite their parents to visit the school for party and introduction activities. I chose not to invite my dad, so I was alone at the festivities. I felt envious of all my classmates for having loving parents to have fun with. My teacher noticed me alone, came over and offered to be my parent for the day. I was so happy. We had great fun together. Miss Linda had lost both her husband and her son in a plane crash. Only she had survived. After fun day had passed, Miss Linda showed more interest in me. She would bring me sandwiches and spend time with me during breaks. I thought of her as my mom. When I succeeded in my final exams, she hugged me with tears of joy. I unconsciously said, thanks mom. I went home happy that day, but had to face my dad again. He asked me why I was late coming home, and I told him about having to pass my final exams. He didn't believe me though, and asked me to show him proof. Unfortunately, I had none, so he began kicking and punching me. There was a knock on the door. He tried to block me from opening the door, but I managed to open it. Miss Linda was standing there. She glanced at my bruises and bloody face and moved between me and my dad to protect me from further abuse. Dad snarled and threatened her with a beating if she didn't leave immediately. But she hit him in the eyes with a blast of mace or pepper spray, and he went down to the floor in extreme discomfort, grabbing at his eyes. Miss Linda called the police, told them about Dad's child abusive nature, and had him arrested. Now I live with Miss Linda as my new mom. Dad is in prison, where I hope he stays till he dies or rots. Either outcome is okay with me. Hello everyone, I'm Lauren. Did you ever wonder what it would be like to have your life completely destroyed by someone close to you? Ever thought about what you would do then? I didn't have time to think. Because that's exactly what happened to me. It all started two years ago. I lived a quiet life with my mom and dad and my sister. I loved my family. We were always together. We were happy. Until that fateful day. My dad got fired from his work. A big company. He had worked there for 20 years. The only money we had then was what he had managed to save over the years. Finding a new job wasn't easy. It was a hard time for all of us. Especially my dad. He was becoming desperate. At times, he just sat there, quietly, deep in thought, and I rarely saw him smile since. One late night, we were still up waiting for him. When he walked through the door, when he walked through the door. But something was different. He wasn't walking straight. It was the first time in my life seeing him drunk. I decided to take matters in my own hand. I started job hunting. I was lucky enough to find something suitable at a startup company. The pay was good enough, and the more I worked, the more I earned. I was trying my best to get our life back. I was giving it all I've got. My dad started asking me for money. I was more than happy to give him what he needed. I didn't even ask what it was for. Then he started asking for more. He came late almost every night, and he was never awake in the morning. It seemed like we hadn't talked together for ages. Then, money started disappearing from my purse. I got home from work one night. It had been a long day, and I was really tired. I put my bag in my room, and I went to the kitchen to find something to eat. I made myself a sandwich, 
then took it back to my room, but when I got to the door, I saw a shadow moving inside. I thought everyone was asleep, so I opened the door slightly and looked inside. I couldn't believe what I saw. My dad was standing over my bag, and my wallet was in his hand. He found no money in it, so he threw it on the bed and started going through my purse. At that moment, my mom came down the stairs. She had my dad's shirt in her hands and a small pack of white powder. I looked at her face. Her eyes were filled with tears. I tried to speak but found nothing to say. My dad came out of my room. He saw us standing there. He tore the shirt and the pack from my mom's hands. He was hysterical. He started breaking things around him. Suddenly, everything changed. My mom and I were too scared to move, but then my sister came running down the stairs. He pulled her towards him and held a knife to her throat. He threatened to kill her if we didn't give him money. Without a moment's thought, I did what he asked. Things only got worse. Nothing was ever enough. He asked for more and more money, and if I refused, he'd get violent, beating up anyone in his path. I couldn't stand by and watch, so I would just give him what he wanted. Until I decided enough was enough. He barged down the stairs one evening and asked for all the money I've got. I told him we had expenses to pay, the rent, school fees, but none of it mattered to him. He asked me again for the money and threatened me if I didn't do what he asked. I refused. He hit me so hard that I crashed my head against the wall and fell to the floor, bleeding. Everything went dark. My mom took me to different hospitals and I had to do a lot of checkups and tests, but all the doctors said the same thing, that this was it. I was sentenced to live my life in darkness, never to see the light again. Bumping my head against the wall was one of the reasons, but apparently my psychological state played a huge role in my recovery. The doctors suggested that I'd be taken to a psychiatrist. My dad felt sorry for what he had done to me. He quit the drugs and alcohol, tried to be proper but it was because of him that I was in this state. I didn't know if I could ever find it in myself to forgive him. I was torn inside. He was my dad, but I couldn't forget what had happened. I stopped talking shortly after, and he left, disappearing from our lives. No one knew where he was or what he was. A year had passed, and he came home. He sounded good, kind of like how he was before. He's trying to make up for what he had done, but to me, Nothing he does makes a difference anymore. Kinda like how he was before. He's trying to make up for what he had done. But to me, nothing he does makes a difference anymore. I'm still in the dark. That's something I'm gonna have to live with my whole life. I can't change that. What do you think I should do? Most people I saw hated and cursed at me. And some treated me more kindly and gently than usual. It was very confusing to be honest. I didn't know the reason for people's animosity towards me. But I thought perhaps it had something to do with my mother. Before telling my story, let me introduce myself. My name is Maria. I lived in a poor neighborhood fraught with drugs and death. People who lived there were mostly losers. Growing up, people have always looked at me with disdain. For no good reason. People ostracized me. I had no friends, no one to speak to. When I would return home, I'd ask my mother why people didn't like me. She wouldn't answer. She'd just cry and smile sadly. She would often tell me to ignore people's looks. But how can I ignore the looks of everyone around me? It was the biggest mystery in my life. I didn't know if my father was alive or not. The only thing I knew about my father was how he looked from a picture on our wall. And if I asked about him, my mother would only tell me that he traveled and he never came back, that she didn't know anything about him, almost as if he were dead. But I suspected that she wasn't telling me the whole truth and I thought people in our neighborhood knew something I didn't. Perhaps that was the reason they hated me so much. Aside from this problem, I was a clever girl at school. I dreamed of having a good position in life to make my mother proud of me. One day, as I was returning home from school, I felt that someone was following me. I turned around once, but saw no one. The second time I turned around, I saw a man. He was wearing a mask. I was afraid, and I ran home to my mother. She was worried, and she just hugged me. It happened a lot after that. It seemed like everywhere I went, that man just happened to be there. I spent a lot of time thinking about it, who that man could be. Eventually, I graduated and got a job with a well-known company. 
We left our poor neighborhood and rented a flat in a good area. I had almost forgotten about the mystery man, who used to follow me often. Then, one day, a poor man came into my office. He handed me an envelope. Smiling, he told me to say hello to Isabella, then disappeared, leaving me with even more questions. Who was he, and how did he know my mother? I returned home, told her about this man, and showed her the envelope. She looked worried and asked me to quickly open it for her. When I did, I found something unexpected. One old photo of him, and a recent one. I didn't know it then, but that man was my father. And all I did was walk away. I curiously began reading the letter. It said, Dear Maria, I am sorry for everything. Sorry for the suffering I caused you and your mother. Sorry for not being there with you as you grew up. I hope that you can both forgive me. Please tell Isabella that I never forgot about her, or you. I love you two so much. I looked at my mother. She was holding the photographs and crying quietly. So the mystery man who had often followed me home had actually been my father, watching me from afar. I asked my mother, Why did you hide the truth from me? Why didn't you tell me where my father was all these years? She replied, I was afraid to shock you with the news that your father was in prison for killing someone. And I gasped, Killing someone? Hello, my name is Benjamin and I'm 17 years old. I am sitting in a court waiting to hear my sentence, my punishment. When you listen to my story, you may pity me. My story started three years ago when my parents died in a train crash. My father was a businessman and my mother was just a housewife. The news of their death was a big shock to me because I couldn't imagine my life without them. I was forced to move in with my grandparents. The hardest period of my life was about to start. My relationship with them wasn't that close. They lived in a city far away from my home, so I visited them in the past only a few days every year. When I heard my friends talking about the generosity of their grandparents, I wondered why because mine never gave me any presents or showed me any kindness at all. My grandparents lived austere lives, so living with them was hard for me. They were stingy and cheap. Despite living in a villa, we all ate plain meals that barely supplied me adequate nourishment. In addition, we only ate one meal a day. I was always hungry. My room was infested with insects. The furniture was worn and torn. They paid the servant a minimal wage, so her work was minimal as well. I would always sneak into the kitchen to steal anything I could find in the fridge to eat. When I asked my grandparents why they were living so minimally, they said it was because they were saving money for the future. When they eventually figured out that I was stealing food from the refrigerator, they locked it closed at night. Do you believe that? One day, when I entered the study to speak with Grandpa, his safe was open and I glimpsed gold bars, a hefty pile of cash, and a mound of jewelry. When he saw me enter, he slammed the safe closed and gave me a cold look. At midnight, I happened to go to the bathroom and while returning to my bedroom, I overheard Grandpa say, Eat fast before he wakes up. I looked through a slot in the door to see them eating delicious food. Grandma said, I don't know why you insisted on letting him move in with us. He replied, Well, I couldn't let people see me abandon an orphaned grandson. She said, I wish I could wake up one day and find him gone. Her words were like a knife through my heart. I decided then and there that they deserved to die. I wished that they had died instead of my parents. I waited until they went to sleep.